ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. It is time for another Metal Earth kit. Today I'm going to build the UNSC Mantis from Halo. This little mech type thing here. Metal Earth kits, they're neat. They're fun to put together. They're challenging. I enjoy them. And now I'm on the Halo series. So let's crack this open and see what it's all about. And again, we have our usual two sheets, and then we have the instructions, which for the second time come in a little plastic pouch. And here we have our instructions, one side, and then the other. And on the front, fold it down to one quarter. We have the first section here that has like a picture drawing of the uh, model. And we have a little area diagram and some bit about folding tabs and, and slots. There's a bit about needle nose pliers are helpful for assembly and uh, about when to, what, how to bend or twist the tabs. There's blue circles which you'll find in different parts of the instructions like here and here and here those tabs are to be bent over green triangles mean they are to be twisted instead of bent over for instance there's one here then you have your layout or map of the two sheets to tell you where all of the parts are you start here with one two and three and they, for the most part, go in order. Top right corner is your diagram and, and a bit about the tabs and such. And then the top right, top left is the diagram. Top right is where you begin, generally. And then you'll go down to the bottom left corner. And then this corner. So it's done in, in sections, quarters. And then you end it part 41 down here and then over here is 43 and into 51 here's 52 this quarter 54 56 and so on I have my usual selection of tools here I have the toolkit from fascinations with the uh, needle nose pliers, long needle nose pliers, the flat end pliers, and the clippers, which are great for getting the parts off of the uh, metal sheets. And I also have a pair of tweezers, which are extremely useful. I also have these ring pliers, which are good for shaping rounded and curved areas, and these forceps that lock which are good for holding on the parts. A selection of dowel rods is a good idea or any kind of rounded object depending on the size. I have dowel rods, I have a paintbrush, I have a large needle. I like to have some sort of dental type pick on hand. This is good for getting into certain areas and pulling out small parts, tabs that may have been too far inward or just pushing on the corners to shape parts. So, time to start clipping some pieces and putting things together. The first part fit right into place the first try. That does not happen at all. Here I am carefully using ring pliers to curve the sides of the piece. I 
often use my fingernails to bend over tabs. On this tiny little piece that goes in the middle gap, you will only want to bend over the tabs. It almost looks like you're supposed to bend flaps with it, but just bend the tabs. And with the folded over tabs, I often like to pinch them down with the pliers to secure them. I spent a lot of time on this cone shaped piece. One of my dowel rods is about the size of a pencil and I've used a pencil sharpener on one end. That makes it near perfect for shaping the cone. Bending the tab over after you've shaped it is tricky. The real tough part is getting it into place. My fingers are just too big. I would have preferred to attach this cone shaped piece before bending over the little tabs where it attaches, but there would not have been enough room to bend it without bending other parts accidentally. I used forceps to hold on to it while setting it in place. The instructions say to twist the tabs, but there is very little room for that. One tab comes in right against another part and you will need something like a knife to bend it over before twisting it. When bending circular parts, I often start with a dowel rod that is a little too big and then move on to a smaller one. This helps keep the part from bending too much in one place. I also find that bending the connecting tabs slightly and rolling the part on the desk secures the tabs pretty well. This video has been edited down to a shorter version. I try to clip out sections where I'm searching for parts, studying the directions, and sometimes repetitive steps while trying to keep relevant information. I also clip parts where I have to try and adjust parts several times to make them fit. It may make it look like this kit comes together easily. There's a lot of bending and adjusting of parts and tabs to make things fit. Work slowly and be patient. These kits take time. The instructions say not to twist the tabs on the next two parts, and for good reason. You need to fold them over to make room for a later connection. I remembered for the first piece, but forgot for the second one. I had to go back and fix the tabs.
When the parts with the tabs are bent over at odd angles, it helps to bend the tabs so that they're all pointing in the same direction. This usually helps when connecting different parts. This is where I ran into a problem for not bending over those tabs. One thing I noticed about this kit is there are a lot of duplicate parts. I have seen this in previous kits. There may be two to five parts that are exactly the same, but only one is marked. It can sometimes be a challenge to find all the other matching parts. In the Transformers kits, they had started to color code the light parts. I like rolling the round parts on the table to bend over and secure the tabs. It tends to work well. I use tweezers to bend the tab over part way and then just roll it on the desk. Sometimes it doesn't go quite right, but then I just try again. The bends and curves of this one are complex. The tabs will pull it together fairly well though. Sorry, I got a little off camera. Here I am bending out the tabs for the next part. The instructions specifically say to bend over all the tabs for these tubular pieces instead of twisting them. I pinched the tabs together with tweezers and then carefully secured them. I used the dental pick to finish shaping the tubes.
It took me some time to pinch and bend all the parts in the correct shape. It took some wiggling and adjusting to get this one tab into place because of the bend. There are four of these similar plates on each leg. They look very much the same, but the tabs are slightly different. The sides bend down not quite 90 degrees, and then you'll need to bend the tabs the rest of the way to 90 degrees so they all attach up nicely. I had a tough time with this cone shaped piece as well. There are four panels on the legs that have a little flap that folds out. Time to put all the pieces together. The instructions were a little hazy at this point. I ended up looking at the 360 view online to make sure I did this part right. I've learned after making many of these kits to slow down, be careful, and look at the directions and pictures to make sure you are proceeding correctly. I had come this far and did not want to mess up. The side flaps of the main body attached to the small tabs at a bit of an angle, which was difficult to see on the directions, and the side arms need the tabs to be out at a right angle to be able to fit. Nowhere is this in the instructions. Because the sides are so long on the base, I bend them over by pushing against the table. This keeps them from warping.
And ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Halo Mantis. I am quite happy to be done with this kit. This is definitely going to go down. It's not one of my favorites. It was a rather tedious kit to build. There were several little sections. Felt like it was going on forever. There were some areas that could have definitely been worse. And I'm happy to have it done. If you like the Halo stuff, get it, do it, be patient. This one took me several days. Part of that was interruptions and part of that is just, I just don't sit down and do them all in one sitting anymore. I find that I get frustrated, especially with a kit with this much going on. These leg pieces are so many folding parts and there's little plates and whatnot and it just some of it's not real clear the instructions if you go by what i think is the release date you have the original star wars kits there were just four you had some other stuff like bugs and planes and uh, landmarks and then they started releasing uh, more star wars star trek halo mass effect and then transformers now there's even more Star Wars, there's Marvel, and I haven't got to the Marvel of the newest Star Wars yet, but if you look at the instructions on how they went, they're getting better, and the instructions for this had a lot of unclear gaps, and one of the problems I've noticed with several of the older kits is that you have duplicate parts. For instance, with this, there were these circular parts in the front and the back of the gun. They weren't too hard to figure out. You're doing them all at the same time. They only number one. And then you have to search out and find the other four. And and there were some, there's been kits like the Star Wars Droidica that there were so many slightly different but similar parts and only one was numbered. I'm not even sure in the end that I found all the right ones, but I did the best I could. And with this, towards the end, you've got these little plates on the legs and you do one leg and you've got the numbers for each one you get the other leg and the numbers repeat and it's like oh wait there's four more plates there's very subtle differences between each one I figured it out but it's just with the transformers kits they color coded the, the parts that were duplicate they put them different colors so that you could find them easier and tell them apart from the other things and I really appreciate that the Transformers instructions seem to be a little more detailed. When I got to the end of this, when it came time to attach these two sides and the side pieces inside the top, I had to go online, look at the 360 view to see how they did it, and then ended up putting the instructions under the microscope because the lines pointing to what connects to what was like curved, and, and at first I didn't even understand it. Got it figured out. Here it is. In the end, it's pretty neat looking. It's a nice size. And these little cone shaped parts, you've got two under the leg and you've got one under the front. They were horrible. I'm <laughs> sorry. They were just horrible. Two of them are pretty badly bent and I sort of kind of got them back in a little bit of shape. Especially this one under here. The little cone piece is just warped because it's so tiny. And that particular area was very hard to get into and I had to use pliers to hold on to it and they ended up crushing it and trying to bend the tab over and holding it together on the next one that I did on one of the back of the legs ended up warping it out of shape and it was difficult to get back the last one I didn't even really bend the tab I just stuck it through bent it a little and put it on before I could damage it any further and it turned out okay but those are Probably the hardest parts was getting those little bitty cones and there's so many arms and, and legs and narrow parts and the connections this thing is wobbly. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching and uh, keep on keeping on.